Hi everyone, and welcome back to Mary's Nest. Today, I'm going to share with you how I make my healthy mineral broth. Well, I've got all my vegetables assembled for making the mineral broth, and I've got my stock pot here. You're going to want to just get out the largest stock pot that you have. And I wanted to share with you the reason I call this mineral broth is that I started with a recipe by Rebecca Katz, who's the author of The Longevity Kitchen. It's a wonderful cookbook, and I'll link to it below if you want to look it up. And in it, she has something called a magic mineral broth. And I use that as my starting point. And uh, some of the vegetables I couldn't find and other things I wanted to add. So I just kind of made it my own. And please do the same. If there are things here you don't like, or that you can't find or whatever the case may be, add the vegetables that you do like because overall all of these have something to offer. They're all high in minerals, in vitamins, in antioxidants and are very good for you. So just pick what agrees with you, what you like and what you can find. And if you can get organic, great, but if not, don't worry about it. Just give everything a good washing in baking soda and water or if you want, uh, in the case of you know your more sturdier vegetables, like carrots and potatoes. You can make a little paste of baking soda and vinegar. It'll froth up. You can give everything a good scrub and a good rinse. Um, so that's that. Alrighty. Well, I'm going to move these out of the way and I'm going to uh, bring you in closer so you can see as we chop everything up and add it to the stock pot. Well, the first thing that we're going to do is start with cutting up our onions. And what I want to say about all of the uh, vegetables that we're going to be using today is that all of them are rich in vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, and the reason we use a variety is even though yes they all have uh, vitamins and minerals and antioxidants, they each bring a little something special uh, to the table. Some are a little richer in certain vitamins and minerals than others and so on and so forth. To give example, uh, onions have something called quercetin, excuse my pronunciation if it's not correct, uh, but that's a wonderful antioxidant and they're high in vitamin C um, and yet leeks, which are also in the onion family that we're going to be using, are um, higher in calcium and iron than onions. So as you see, each uh, player, so to speak, brings a little something to the table. I'm just going to try to hold this securely. And this, now we're going to put in a red onion. And as you see, we're just doing a rough chop, nothing special. And we are leaving all of the skins on because a lot of the vitamins uh, and minerals are in the skins. Alrighty, that's great. Now we're going to move on to the carrots. And again, just a rough chop. And what I like to do is cut them in threes. And for these thicker parts, I like to cut them again. And that way the nutrients can really leach out into the, um, the water as they're cooking. This one's just thin, so nothing to worry about. I'm going to finish uh, cutting on the carrots and then cutting up the carrots and then uh, we'll get the rest of the vegetables. Well, I've got the onions and the carrots in the stock pot. Now I'm going to put in an entire uh, head of garlic. And all I'm going to do is to help release the garlic juices as it simmers in the uh, broth. Oh, it's a tough one. <laughs> Alrighty. All we're going to do is we're just going to take this, drop it right in, skins and all. This is very easy to put together. Now, this is my leek. I washed it. I cut off the root and washed it very well because, you know, leeks, as you may have found, can be very dirty and sandy. So you just want to give that a good washing and that's what I did. And so then I'm just going to Again, just rough chop here and go ahead and put that into the stock pot. As I said, the leek is nice. It's high in um, iron and calcium. So that's a, an, excellent, uh, an excellent vegetable to add in. Alrighty, I'm going to continue uh, cutting up this and we'll keep moving the vegetables through. Well, I've also washed the celery very well. I cut it on the bottom very much like I did with the leeks. And now again, just a nice rough chop. Uh, celery is very high in potassium, which helps give uh, a nice balance to the potassium-sodium uh, uh, 
balance in the body. So that's good. We've got that in. Now we're going to move on to the last of our vegetables here. We've got our sweet potatoes and our red skin potatoes. And potatoes are also high in potassium. And that, that's very important because in American diet, we get a lot of sodium, but we don't always get a lot of potassium. So that's a nice mineral to make sure that you uh, get enough in your diet. And by making this mineral broth with these potassium rich vegetables, it really helps. And again, just a rough chop, nothing fancy, and everything skins and all right into the stock pot. Okay, I'm going to continue uh, finishing up these. I'll show you in the same thing with the sweet potato. Again, it's a little harder, you know, use your hand to kind of press down. The sweet potatoes are a little harder than the white red skin potatoes. And then just a rough chop. Nice and orange. And again, these were just the sweet potatoes that my grocery store had. If your grocery store has a variety, certainly use a variety of sweet potatoes. Um, or if they just have the one, that's fine too. It doesn't matter. And the sweet potatoes are also high in beta carotene like the carrots. Uh, which is a, a, a wonderful vitamin that helps the body make vitamin A. It's beta carotene is the precursor to vitamin A. And vitamin A does so many things that's so wonderful for your body. Excellent for your skin and your eyes. Just an overall uh, wonderful addition. Well, let me finish cutting up these and then we'll talk about the other things we're going to add. Now I'm going to add in some ginger and I'm just going to give this a rough chop. You don't have to peel it. You don't have to worry about it. I like ginger very much, so I'm putting in a fairly good amount, but you can certainly put in less, you know, just this amount or, or leave it out. Uh, it's totally up to you. I like to add ginger because it's a wonderful uh, antiviral, uh, antibacterial, anti-inflammatory, uh, just an all-around uh, fantastic uh, spice to add. And going into cold and flu season, if you drink this um, mineral broth on a regular basis, it can be helpful uh, to the ginger in this can be helpful to uh, trying to give you a little protection against colds and flus, uh, hopefully. Or, or if you do come down with something, hopefully this can make you feel a little better. It's always a warm beverage, any kind of broth can always make you feel better when you have a, a cold or a flu. Alrighty, well I'm just going to keep uh, cutting up this ginger. As you see, nothing fancy, just rough chops. Uh, just give it enough to expose the ginger like we did with all the vegetables uh, as they simmer in the broth. That's that. And now I'm going to add some turmeric. I don't know if you, probably a lot of you are familiar with the turmeric you see that's sold in the bottles at the grocery store. The um, powdered turmeric. This is actually fresh turmeric. It looks just like ginger in a way. A little, a little darker. Uh, let me just get a piece. It's got a little bit of a darker uh, outer layer, but it's this very similar feel and uh, you would peel it the same way if you wanted to peel it. Um, I'm not going to for this mineral broth. The reason I'm going to add this uh, fresh turmeric is it's a wonderful uh, anti-inflammatory. So it helps with the inflammation in the body as well as you know, any kind of inflammation, whether internal or, or, or just general aches and pains. Now, uh, if you don't have this, don't worry about it. If you want to add a little powdered turmeric, you can. Um, it's really up to you. And again, the amount you would add would really depend on how much water you've added. You know, you might want to start with maybe just a, a half a teaspoon and, and see how you like it, or even less than that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slice this up like this. It's very orange inside. It's like a carrot. And the reason I'm using this is it does stain. And if you're cutting up a lot of this, you may want to put on gloves because it will stain your, your hands. But it washes off after a day or so. I'm just going to break that in half like that. Whoops. Get that little piece in. And then just get a few of these. There we go. There we go. We're all set. Okay, well now I want to mention a few other things. I'm going to add in two bay leaves. This is just, I love bay and it 
imparts a lovely flavor. And then in here, I've got some pepper, uh, peppercorns and some allspice berries. The reason I add the peppercorns is they contain an ingredient that helps the body absorb the curcumin, which is in the turmeric. And then I'm also adding the allspice berries. They give a nice flavor, especially I'm making this particular mineral broth in the fall and uh, having it you know, during the fall and the winter with the little bit of an overtone of the flavor of allspice is very delightful. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that. And then we have the secret ingredient. <laughs> this is kombu. It's a type of sea vegetable, seaweed. It's hard when you buy it in the store. You should be able to find this in your grocery store um, if they have an international section in the Asian uh, cooking area. And I think it's pretty common. I live in a small town and my grocery store carries it, so I think you'll be able to find it. The nice thing about this is very uh, rich in minerals and it also helps you, uh, helps your body absorb all the other minerals and, and vitamins and whatnot uh, that are gonna be in this overall mineral broth. So it's a nice little uh, thing to add. Alrighty, I'm gonna go ahead and put that in the stock pot. Well, we're all set. I'm gonna bring you in and, and just show you how the stock pot looks and we'll get ready to add our water. Well, we've got everything here in the stock pot. Hopefully you can see all of that. And what we're gonna do is just cover with water. So we wanna put just enough water in to cover everything. So this is one pitcher. Let's see if it's gonna take another pitcher. Alrighty, oh, that's gonna, this is gonna be wonderful. Okay, let me get a little more water and I'll be right back. Well, I'm gonna continue uh, filling this with water. I got another pitch of water here. Uh, and how much water you use will depend on how large your stock pot is. And as I said, it, you know, depending on the size of your pot, stock pot, if it's smaller, you can certainly cut back on the vegetables. You know, two sweet potatoes instead of three, and you know, so on, uh, three carrots instead of six, so on and so forth. Alrighty, oh my goodness, this is taking a lot. Well, I'm gonna add a little bit of more water and then we're gonna bring it up to a boil. Alrighty, well I've got this all filled and pretty much everything submerged, so that's good. And I've got it up to a boil. I'm gonna bring this up to a boil. Once it comes up to a boil, I'm going to turn it down to low and then I'm gonna let it simmer uncovered for two hours. And then at two hours, we're going to have the last ingredient that's gonna go in, which is going to be um, some Italian flat leaf parsley. And we're just gonna put that in for the last 10 minutes, about a half a bunch. And again, you know, these amounts are very flexible depending on how big your stock pot is and uh, how much water you're using, so on and so forth. So that's that. Alrighty, let me bring this up to a boil and I'll uh, show you how that looks and then we'll get ready to turn it down to low. Well, the mineral broth came up to a boil and I turned it down to low. I have in my very lowest setting and I just wanted to show you, this is what the kombu uh, looks like once it's been in the water for a while. You see it becomes very uh, pliable and widens up quite a bit. So that's a, a great little uh, secret ingredient to add into your miracle uh, broth. Well, anyways, I'm gonna let this now simmer uh, very uh, uncovered for two hours and then at two hours we'll come back, we'll add in our flat leaf parsley and our bunch of that and we'll let that simmer for another 10 minutes and then we'll be ready to strain everything and decant our, our bone broth, I'm not a bone broth, I make a lot of bone broth, I get mixed up, uh, decant our mineral broth. And I just wanna mention, I don't want you to worry because those of you who know me, I don't waste anything. And none of this in here is going to go to waste. What we're gonna do is we're gonna puree all of these vegetables, skins and everything. And then we're going to, uh, in my case, if you have a food mill, I have a little food mill and I'll show it to you. you it's a little hand crank one and we're going to get all the uh, nice parts of the vegetables out and all the skins and so on and so forth will be left behind. Now, don't worry, if you don't have a food mill, you can do this uh, by blending everything, either you know if you have a blender or even one of those high-speed blenders probably work well, um, or a food processor, which is what I'm gonna do it in. 
and then you can use a, um, a strainer, a typical strainer, like one of these. Uh, you know, you might have a bigger, bigger one. This is, I have a bigger one too. I don't know where it is right now, but just a bigger one like this. You put it in, and then you're just going to take your wooden spoon and work it through like that uh, until all of the um, goodness comes out into the bowl, and then you're left behind with the various skins and whatnot that you don't want. So don't worry, none of this is going to go to waste. Alrighty, well let's let this simmer for two hours, and uh, when that's done, we'll add in our Italian flat leaf parsley. Well this has been simmering for two hours on low and I put the parsley in at that point and now that I've had that in there about five ten minutes and the only reason I put that in last and only for a little bit is the parsley can give the entire broth a bit of a stronger flavor than what I'm looking for in the mineral broth because I like to just have it be able to be a little diverse in flavor and not be overpowered with just the parsley. But the parsley uh, doesn't, uh, it, it adds some nutrition. So I do like to, to just put it in for about five, 10 minutes at the end. And you'll see stems and all, it just goes in right like that. And I just let it sit on the top there and simmer with the broth. Uh, for about 10 minutes and now what we're going to do is we're going to strain everything out and I'll show you exactly how, how I do that and then get ready to decant the broth. Well I've removed this from the stove and I'm ready to start sifting out all of the um, vegetables and uh, ginger and so on and so forth and here's the parsley right on top. Uh, it's very rich in vitamin C so that's nice to add into uh, our mineral broth. But just because the taste can sometimes be a little overpowering, uh, I like to just put it in there for the last 10 minutes. So I'm just going to keep straining out the solids. And as I said, we're not going to throw this out. So don't worry about that. I'll show you what we're going to do with that. Well, let me just get all these solids out and then I'll show you how I uh, strain uh, the mineral broth to make it nice and clear and get ready to decant it. Well, I've removed all the solids from the broth and now I'm going to get ready to strain it into my colander here, which I've put over another pot. And I'm just going to move this like that and then I'm going to line the colander with a um, uh, not cheesecloth oh I forget what I normally call it flour sack towel that's it and the reason that I like this is it's reusable I've had these for years I mean going back to when my son was young and I was making bone broth um, uh, I think some of them I have are 20 years old and uh, they're nice because you can just rinse them in the sink when you're done and then throw them in with the rest of your dish towels and they wash up beautifully. And so it's a lot more cost effective than using cheesecloth because cheesecloth needs to be uh, discarded. You might be able to get a couple of uses out of it if you rinse it out well in your sink, but eventually it needs to be discarded and I find it a little costly. So I find this more cost efficient to do. But certainly if you're in a very busy household with young children and you want to use cheesecloth, I've said this in my bone broth video, you can just throw that out. And speaking of my bone broth video, if you're new to my channel, I'd like to say welcome. And if you're interested in learning about traditional foods cooking and making broths like this and also natural living, cooking from scratch, and maybe uh, going on a few adventures with me, thrifting and, and other things as well around the Texas Hill Country, I hope you'll subscribe to my channel. And be sure to click on the little notification below uh, bell below that'll let you know each time I upload a new video. Alrighty, well let's go ahead and strain this now. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually I'm going to use a um, uh, soup ladle to do this. It's quite warm and this pot's a little heavy. But all I do at this point is strain it through like this. Now the reason I strain this is I want it to be a nice clean clarified broth in essence. Uh, not truly clarified in the sense where you're adding an egg white and all of that to like the chefs do, 
But what I want to do is just get out the little bits of uh, debris that I may not have uh, been able to remove with the um, little strainer that I was using. And also, what I find is when I make this broth, the sweet potatoes do tend to disintegrate a bit. And uh, they're, the, what, what did dis disintegrate from the sweet potatoes is uh, floating around in the stock, which would make it a little, or in, in the bone, in, <laughs> see I'm always thinking bone broth, in the, uh, in the mineral broth. And I really want to get this as clear as possible. So I'm going to keep uh, transferring this from here to my strainer, and then I'll uh, show you exactly what it looks like when everything is completely strained out and it's nice and clear of any other uh, little bits of vegetables. Well, I've got it all uh, filtered out now, and it just looks lovely. And I'm going to decant it right into this half gallon jar. And this works out well because uh, we like, my husband and I like to drink a little broth every day, uh, whether it's beef bone broth or chicken bone broth or this mineral broth. So uh, we will go through this pretty quickly. So I'm going to put this one in the fridge. And then with what I have left over, I'm going to put in these smaller containers, which I'm going to put in my freezer. And I, for those of you who have seen my chicken bone broth uh, video, you know that I like to uh, store it in here in my freezer. And this is about a two cup portion, and it's perfect for when I want to defrost some to use instead of water, like for making rice and so on and so forth, to make things more nutritious. And the same goes for this mineral broth, that if I just want something in a two portion size, two cup portion size, I've got it handy. I can use it as a broth to make rice um, or as, as a base for soups. Um, pretty much anywhere I would use any of my other broths. So, so that's that. <laughs> and I'm just going to continue uh, filling this up and then I'll show you how everything looks when it's finished. Well, I've got this all decanted into uh, my half gallon jar, and I've got this jar for my freezer, and I actually have a little more I'm going to add to another jar for my freezer, so I'm all set, and it just smells wonderful. And I've put some in a mug here to give a little taste to. Let me just move these out of the way. It's, uh, it's still quite warm. Mmm. Oh, that's delicious. Mmm. Oh, you really taste the, the sweet potato and the carrot, a little bit of the ginger, uh, very faint though. Um, a little bit, of, you can tell there's a little bit of potato in there and it's lovely, uh, so delightful. And if you want at this point, you know, you can add in a little sea salt uh, to flavor it up, not, but flavor it up or whatnot, but it's, it's really quite very good. I think that, that you're going to enjoy this. It's very nice. It's a rainy day here in the hill country. Now it's nighttime and that's nice to enjoy. So I really uh, suggest that you make this. I think you'll be very pleased with it and you'll get all the mineral nutrients from it. It'll be good for your health. It'll be wonderful. Now, that said, let me show you what we do with everything that we strained out of the broth. Well, now I've brought back all these solids that we uh, removed from the broth. And I wanted to show you what I do next. Now, this is a food mill, and mine's older and has a wooden handle. Uh, a lot of the modern ones have uh, a stainless steel handle, which is nice because you can put the whole thing in the dishwasher. And it comes with three different, um, what do you call them, <laughs> strainers. And what I like to do is take the one that has the smallest holes. So it's this one. And I, you put that in the bottom, like, just like that. And then you're going to take this part of your food mill, and it, there are like these little clamps inside. And all you do is set this, this part into the hole, and then you just put one side and then it's, it's got like a little spring on it so it pops right in. Then what we're going to do is we're going to get this bowl, empty bowl, we're going to put it over 
I'll put the food mill over that and and then let me just get let's use this spoon we won't do the whole thing but I'll just show you so you can get the gist of it now when I cross, come across the kombu, remember the seaweed we put in there? That I'll remove. And things like the bay leaf and whatnot, they don't uh, really work too well in, in the food mill. But I just want to fill this up. And when I get this filled up, then I'll show you how we're going to crank it around and the puree that we're going to get down into the bowl. Now I also wanted to mention, when you put the things into the food mill, it's good to pick out the ginger and the turmeric because they're a little tough. And like the kombu, those are things that are a little difficult to get through the food mill, but everything else, put it right in. So you just load it in, like I did, and then you just crank it around like this. I use this to make homemade applesauce as well, which I love because you just cut up the apples and then you throw everything in, skin and all. Uh, and then you just put all of it in here and then strain it out and you have your wonderful uh, applesauce. And so you just go around like this and then you go you back up if things start to pile up a little bit and then you go around again, so on and so forth. Well, that is that. And then what you have, I'm just going to rest this over here, then you, you'll get this nice pureed soup. And I have a feeling if it's anything like the broth, it's going to be very tasty. And so I'm just going to give this a little taste. Oops. Alrighty. Oh, that's lovely. Just delicious. I mean, for me, it doesn't even really need any salt, but you could add a little if you wanted. But that is just delightful. And you could put that on the stove. You could cook it down a little more if you wanted to get it a little thicker. You could add cream, butter, whatever you wanted to do. And I, I think you're going to really like it. It's very tasty. It has a little nice sweetness of the sweet potatoes and the carrots, just a hint of the ginger. and. Uh, it's really very lovely. So, and then you're going to keep cranking this down till you have barely anything in there. And then the little bits that you have left, you, know, you can throw in the compost pile or, or, or whatever. And you've wasted very little. And so you have a wonderful mineral broth and a mineral rich soup. For complete instructions on how to make this healthy mineral broth, please visit my website, marysnest.com. And if you like this video, I hope you'll give me a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And if you're interested in learning more about how to make broth, natural living, cooking from scratch, and traveling around the Texas Hill Country with me, thrifting and on other adventures, I hope you'll subscribe to my channel. And be sure to click on the little notification bell below. That'll let you know every time I upload a video. Well, that's all for today. But thank you so much for joining me. And I look forward to having you join me again right here in my Texas Hill Country kitchen. And here's to our healthy mineral broth. Love and God bless.